Denise is coming in with a little lipstick. Denise, <laughs> I think you'll want a little. Denise, come in with a little lipstick and a little brush and a little. <laughs> a little oh no, Denise. my fingers are my brush. <laughs> and look at all of our hair. Make sure we all look cute <laughs> Thank too. You. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are super psyched to have one of our favorite people in the whole world, a dynamic woman who has dedicated her life to representing talent for more than three decades. And she's flat out awesome, has an exciting new chapter we're going to talk about and a lot more. So we are going to get buzzed right now with the fabulous Vanessa Gilbert. Vanessa Gilbert, ladies and that gentlemen. That would be me. I oh, mean, yes. hello. We are Look in the presence me. I mean, of <laughs> voiceover representation royalty. Thank I'm you, dear. Um, Thank you, dear. Gorgeous. <laughs> and can we talk about your skirt a little bit? Gorgeous. Yes. Uh, uh, Sheba. Who are you wearing? <laughs> Sheba. Who are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing tonight? Sheba. And it's a. Uh, it's Great fabulous. Color. I love it. I don't know so, if y'all can see it. Vanessa didn't know that she was actually going to match the new no. I know. season the nine VO Buzz Weekly yeah. set. Yeah, Perfect. it's Fabu and it. the mugs, the whole deal. Very cool. Exactly. You yeah. look lovely. I feel Thank right you. at home. <laughs> Thank you for coming down and you know visiting us and chatting yeah. with us. We know that you're yeah. really, really busy and there's lots of amazing things going on with you. Uh, we've known Vanessa for uh, quite some time now and through the years, man, she's just, been such a powerhouse and mm -hmm. not only that she's she's an advocate for you the talent she's yeah. one of those agents that gets involved and yeah. so we really we've been wanting to chat for, with you for years and finally she has the time to talk but to it's us. an exciting time because there's some new things on the horizon anything new you want to well get off your there chest is, there is a why don't we start one off with honking that? thing <laughs> we like honking things. we'll start with the first honking thing that yeah. i can think of yeah. yes uh <clears throat> mr soliday has uh, decided to turn a page. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've hooked up with these wonderful ladies that have a company called RSA Entertainment. RSA. Yeah. And uh, they are mainly a management company, mm -hmm. but they also have their talent agency license, which makes me very happy because agency is all I've done all these years. Yes. And uh, I did do a lot of research before I committed to this. So these gals are dynamic and... Uh, and down to earth and really mm -hmm. good people. And like, they won't eat babies for breakfast. Uh, I thought you were gonna say bacon. <laughs> I don't know about that, but but you know how a lot of agents like are cutthroats yeah. and just, yeah. <laughs> you know. Because they represent kids and adults. And, kids, adults, yeah. literary. They do, they cover a lot of uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so anime, you're I mean, we've got some animation division. deals going. Yeah. And so anyway, we got a, an office together in Burbank, just a minute or a skip so away. from here. Yes. And uh, it's a beautiful office. And yeah. Got a lovely booth and just doing it. And you're going to tear Living it up in the 2020 life. with a yeah. whole new. Yeah. Well, you know what? I've got such an amazing crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The voiceover people that I represent, a lot of them have been with me for a million years. A long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. George, George Deloyo, Deloyo. Deloyo. Paul Pape. Uh, I am blessed that, that these guys are with me through thick and thin, yeah. you know, because they know who I am and they yeah. know what I represent and and they know they're not just a number in my, you yeah. know, I, I keep, uh, I keep the talent pool low, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and I try to utilize them in all aspects rather than, you know, that's a, one thing that's different about where I come from is I'd like an actor to be able to be versed in all the different arts rather than you do the promo department and you do the animation department and everybody's segregated. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, I like to use the guys and have them affluent in all those yeah. fluent yeah. and all those. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's a positive thing. Absolutely. So, and I expect, you know, top notch stuff, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm really fortunate. It's exciting. Yeah. 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 We're, we're very excited yeah. for you. We know this is going to be Thank an you. awesome venture. Thank you. Yeah. And we know that there's going to be loads of success. So, yeah, because you're also, I mean, it would be very easy for you to say, I've done it this way, and now I don't want to reinvent. I don't want to see where it could go. And so it's it's very brave, and I applaud your... Thank your, you. Your Thank you. Absolutely. I, see, I don't see it do as, as another reinvention, because it was interesting when I left TGMD and went to Solid. Yeah. 
I went there to work with Michaela. Yep. Okay, and get things firing with her. Yep. And then she split. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was just sort of like ding, 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 ding. And it was like, trails. okay, let's reassess. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then we were all up the way out in Timbuktu, otherwise known as Canoga Park. Right. Yes. God bless Canoga Park. There's right. nothing wrong with it. No. I love Canoga Park. Yeah. But, dude, let's reel it back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so after Mike turned the page, you know, and then da 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 da, -da and then here we are. And I am yeah. really fortunate to be with these gals who are open minded, who have the greatest little kids. Yeah. I love these little kids. These mm -hmm. kids of today are so far ahead. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, no, 10 is the new whoa. 30. Yeah. Yeah. 10 is. is the new 30. It is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're excited for you because we know that this is a moment in time now where you get to like shake things up yeah and yeah and, and start with a with, yeah. with almost a clean slate right? right you still have your peeps and your talent right but this is new it's exciting it's fresh it's and, and right and you're so good at just Rolling doing what it. you do man yeah. that putting you in like a fresh little pot of whatever this thing is, is right like <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. thank you you're like the miracle girl of representation. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Uh, You're the Monsanto. Yeah, yes, <laughs> um, yeah. Can I ask you? Can Monsanto I ask you, free. I, I want to ask you something because because uh, I because I, I want people to know about this. But how how in depth do you get involved in the audition process of the people that you represent? <clears throat> can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. On the juicy projects, because mm. you know. Can't kiss every frog. <laughs> you no, yeah, gotta, yeah. <laughs> got to save yourself for the, of course. the good ones. Yeah. Um, I love having everybody come in and read, or I'll, I'll direct them over the phone. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about that first three words of everything. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so many auditions you see now. It says only submit your top five and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And suppose you've got eight. You know, and I. Don't know how the bigger agencies even figure this out. Like yeah. they have 10 or 12 of those guys that can nail yeah. that thing. Yeah. But it's, you know, only submit five. Yeah. So that's a hard decision to make, except it's not. Because you can really hear it. You can hear yeah. the uh, the understanding of what, you know, I, I like simple. Yeah. But melodic. Can you explain a little mm -hmm. bit more about those first five words? Yeah, three. it's actually three, three. Because we've heard the okay, first. Okay, it's really two. We've heard the first, <laughs> the first 10 <laughs> the seconds. The first, the first inhale. What's she the knows. deal with the first two words? Yeah, it's the first two words. I actually, whenever I do, I do some workshops at yeah. the office. I have people come in and we practice this, the first two words. Because I'm like, dude, if you want to make it on this reel, you know, you may get great in the middle, but nobody's going to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's the first line, you know, and I, it could be, you know, the once upon a time. And you'd be amazed that yeah. once upon a time, no. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. You know, it, it's, you'd be amazed at how much crap comes back at you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying be obvious and, and just... There's ways to do everything that, and it's all melody, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and uh, so when I listen to auditions, which are, I listen to everyone, unless I'm so bloody late and I've got three minutes to turn it in, yeah. then I just, you know, and pray to God. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then again, here's the other side of that. Sometimes, I don't know, the producers nowadays, they, it's, things are so dumbed down. They really are. That. Mm -hmm. Crap, books kind of makes it on the. And I just like, well, well, crap is a style now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah! No, because when you, especially in commercials, you'll hear something, and I'll say, "Did did he say sandwich?" Yeah, yeah, Try, sandwich. Did I important? Yeah. Okay, that word important. Or especially, did I'm like, did especially. I miss it? I rewind it because I DVR a lot, and I'm like, oh no, it was Sam sandwich, especially. Okay. So that whole being perfect right. can be right. a liability in some respects. So, and, and I'm with you on that 
on those first, on that first line yeah. because like when I'm directing people right. here and do a cutting a demo or something, right. I always notice that everybody starts the first line like it doesn't really matter right. and then they get into it like halfway through it job. and I'm like, whatever you did at the end, you need to do that at the top <laughs> Yeah, because we're beginning has to, to match the end. The end. Holy they, uh, you, man. You finish your story, yeah. period. Yeah. Well, yes. the main reason why I asked you that question, Vanessa, and I'm going to brag about you a little bit is because I love... And I've seen you do this so many times with talent that you'll send them an audition, an audition and they'll they'll have a read and you'll call them up and say, I want to direct you on this because you're perfect for this. We want to get this right. right. And you take the time right. to physically direct them over the phone so they can have a solid winning read. And that is That's so all cool, you can man. ask of any actor. Not all is of to agents turn do that. in something that soars. Yeah. You may not get the job. Right. But I know, they'll remember but, you. I get calls all the time, like you guys turned in something a month ago, and yeah. we're not. We're, we, he didn't get that. Yeah. But what about this? Mm -hmm. So they do remember, and I've got sometimes clients like, "Does anybody ever hear anything I do?" And I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting there going, "Does anybody hear?" And then anything and then I you, send out, <laughs> and then you call, and then you get the call, and yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. we're paying attention to that one. Yeah. So they're hearing it. The problem is, they're just hearing. An oversaturation yeah. Well, yeah. of so much Seamless. material. Yeah. It's just, and I get wanting to stand out, and I get, and I get, and I get, and I get, but you know, it's like the people who slate funny or cough at the beginning of their slate. <coughs> you know, <coughs> I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, yeah, that one. was like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. The hairball. Yeah. 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 But, and now there's no slates, which I love. So right. I what love is it about not slating? Okay, so let's say they put out a call and you get 100 celebrities, 100 stars to yeah. read, 100 scale actors, mm -hmm. okay? So when these producers are sitting there listening to playback, I would like to picture them not looking at the slate, uh, at the names. Yeah. I would like them, because let's face it, you get these, you know, sort of John Hamm or sort of this and sort of that, and that's just regular guy right mm -hmm. you know with a bit of snoot you yeah. know and confidence and blah 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 and you know that's just a read that's just a mindset but i bet you the scale guy would book over the celebrity but oh, if yeah. they didn't see all the names right, right, you know like right. hey isn't that so-and-so from uh, blackish you yes. know, or yeah. da 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 da, because you know everybody's reading. Yeah. Yes. Everybody wants yes. to be doing it. Yeah. It's yes. from their little trailers. Yeah. On yes. set somewhere into their iPhones. It sounds yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But they're but they're up but for they're it. The name. And we've yeah. had we've had I, I think it was Wes Stevens who said right. what they're unless they really specifically want that celebrity, what they're hiring, what a celebrity brings is their confidence, and they know who they are, which a rank and file scale actor has as well. Oh, in spades. In spades. So it's a, it's a matter of, it, exactly. It's a name. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's how many likes or whatever exactly. that whole damn thing is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've pretty much made my career in scale performers. Yeah. I mean, even Don LaFontaine was scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, he was more like triple, quadruple well, scale. No. No? No. Pro everything promo was scale. Scale, scale. <sighs> yeah. No, scale, scale. He had the amazing volume, but yeah, he was yeah, he still... had. The, it was about volume, yeah, and it was all done. Uh, <clears throat> once upon a time, you got paid for everything you read, yeah, yeah, and you read all day long, all day long. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would change an uh to a the, yeah, and they'd have you reread the script, yeah, and you'd get another session fee, yeah, yeah. and then hey. it became very abused, yeah, right. and then it went to hell, yeah, yes. and now it's in hell. Yeah, still. By the way, that's a good hell. I wonder why um, I was born. That would catch it's an my interesting hell. Right it's an interesting hell. Can, since we're already here, we uh, segued yeah. into DLF. Don LaFontaine. DLF. Um, uh. You represented Don for like his entire freaking career. Actually, no, Steve Tisherman. Almost, right, right, right. Steve Tisherman. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, he was a good friend of Robbie Davis's from Davis Glick. Floyd. 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 Okay, so Floyd called Robbie, whatever, this whole g Tisherman getting Dawn. Yeah. Dawn, Steve would tell you the story, but, you know, it was like, oh, there's this guy, Don LaFontaine, he works Kaleidoscope. He's writing all these trailers. He's really good. You should hit him up. And Steve was just kind of getting started. He's like, okay, you know, and got the number and he'd call and, you know, back in the days of message machines and Don would never call back and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd say he'd call back, and then he didn't call back. And then one day he called back, 
and he never looked back. Mm. I mean, it was just. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. He just <laughs> exploded. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what, what, an, a, what a humble man. What, what an incredible think? storyteller. Talk about the first word, the yeah, first breath. Exactly. Inhale but was why do you think, incredible. Vanessa, why do you think Don exploded like, like that when he. Because came he brought out. such style. I mean, you listen to those, those guys who did all the trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. you just got sucked into. Uh, Don was not just a hard hitting announcer. Mm-hmm. You know, he romanced everything and he, he painted pictures and he caressed and he, you know, being a writer himself, he knew right. where all that jazz went, right. the shading yeah. and all of that stuff. And I was so fortunate in uh, 1980, I got to work at the voice casters mm-hmm. <laughs> with, yes. with Tress McNeil, wow. <laughs> me and Tress <laughs> and Bob Lloyd. Okay. And uh, down the street from LA studios yeah. on uh, Ventura. Across, I know where that yeah, is. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Sunny Blue Skies and all those guys. Yeah. Um, but I was so fortunate to be able to listen to the creme de la creme of every talent agency. And there were only like five. Yeah. Right. There were only like five. Yeah. And they had, you know, and I was at Abrams Rubeloff before then. Yeah. Um, but listening to all these, these hand-picked... Gems. Oh, yeah. It was just... Well, he was so amazing because he had that big voice but he could do comedy he could be dramatic he had such a versatile it's toolbox. acting skills it's amazing it's yeah. all the it's foreplay it's acting skills he knew how to massage a piece of copy mm-hmm. and every word i mean he used to tell me towards the end to answer your question uh i represented him his tisherman had him okay yeah, and then i right. moved in with tisherman in 91 right um and then I was very involved in all of those guys. Exactly. I yeah. mean, I was skinny then. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wore a headset. <laughs> I, no, I, wore I wore a headset, headset and I oh was. Oh my God, you remember know, the headset? Go for Vanessa. Yeah, God, yeah, I loved headsets. Yeah. Did, you, did you say go for Vanessa? Did you say that? Yeah. No, I did not. I said okay. for a good time call. And I didn't say that either. But uh, I mean, we had Nick Tate and Peter Cullen and Al Chop. Yeah, and yeah. Da, da, da. I was just like, go, 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 yeah. go. And we also had um, <clears throat> all the little people. We had Zelda Rubenstein, <laughs> Billy Barty. You know, it was a real interesting place to be. That's that so agency. cool, man. Yeah, it was great. What was the coolest thing about Don? About just the person his, that he was? His, because and I, and I he, asked because a lot of people know Don, but yeah. they've never known. About okay, here's Don. a good story. I've told yeah. it a couple of times. Okay, good. I think I told it at his memorial. Um, it was a Jewish holiday, and I was pretty much on my own at the office. And uh, I brought Ben with me, my son. Mm-hmm. He was like seven or so. And every day, Don would go to NBC, like twice a day. Yeah. Like at 9.30, he had to be there, and again in the afternoon. So Don came in and saw Ben at the office and said, what are you doing here? And Ben was like, no school. He says, well, I think you'll be riding with me today. Ah. So in the limo. So he took Ben all over town and back and then gave him all his scripts, just like he used to do with all those yeah. people. Mm-hmm. People that were really earnest, who really wanted to learn and by osmosis, you know, yeah. like, just let me yeah. watch you. Let me listen. Let me get an ounce of, and Don was so giving. Yeah. And you could sit right across from him. Like yeah, he, was he would take him on his limo ride. Yeah. Yeah. He would take yeah, him on his limo. Know, Clinton was yeah. his driver so cool. and there, you couldn't park. Don was like the first guy to get the ISDN, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and that was an, and everybody started getting it. And then I think they invented ISDN for Don. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what did Ben think of that oh, experience? Oh, Ben loved it. He went twice. Mm. He went it. But Don, Don was so warm. And for being such a big shot, yeah. he was so warm and loving and comforting and just real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been so, another thing, I just can't keep, I've been so fortunate in my career to be around the big guys yeah. that are real. Yes. Yeah. Because think about all those big guys that aren't real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to like do a dance around all these guys. And yeah, I've never had to do the yeah. dance. By the way, we're using the word as real my, to substitute for other words that we yeah. can't say or use. No, as my mother, as my mother promote. would say, he was not <laughs> full of himself. Yeah. That's it. So, Vanessa, uh, was working in the entertainment business something that you always wanted to do, or how did no, you... No, I didn't want to do it at all. Oh, good. Okay. This well. is a good star, eh? Okay, Tell so me. Don Pitts 
Remember him? Yes. Yeah. Good old Don. An yeah. Icon. We've heard lots of Don stories. Okay. From okay. Years, so my, Don's wife and my mom used to do all the PTA stuff. I grew up in Woodland Hills. Okay. So they were associated. They had this great. And uh, I had gone through, uh, after I came back from the You Know What tour, mm-hmm. <laughs> I uh, went into secretarial school and like my grandmother was like, I'm worried about her. She needs to come down to some reality. <laughs> Let's put her in secretarial school where they teach her how to type and take shorthand and yeah. spell. Yeah. <laughs> Write a letter. <laughs> take dictation. Okay, so I did. You did. So I did. And I went and worked at some legal place, Gibson Dunn and Crutcher. I remember all they wanted oh, to hear nice. were stories about my rock and roll days. That's all they ever wanted. Mm. <sighs> Hey, speaking yeah. of it, you're going to share some stories. I will. With us, I'll right? share some stories. Okay, yes. Sidebar. Stay focused okay. until okay. Okay. Focus. Okay. okay, go. What was the question? Secretary school. <laughs> Did you want to be in the entertainment business? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I really didn't. I didn't. My mother, oh my God, my mother was, was so a showgirl. She's comedy, this girl. My mother was a showgirl, okay, yeah. when I was like, so Christmases were like thousands of scantily people. Cleared people over, and our Christmas trees had like room dividers, decorate, you know, like the the whole. Yeah, I mean, my my thirteenth birthday was in uh, Bimbo's three six five in San Francisco oh with the naked God. lady and the fish. And, wow! And I, I'm sitting in there like, what am I doing here? It's time to grow up, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Time. and they bring in my birthday cake, and it's a baked Alaska. <laughs> Or uh, whatever you call it, Alaska, Alaska, yes, whatever. Yes, Alaska. Yes. Something's on fire, and that was my birthday cake. Um, mm. My mother it was very colorful growing up. So showbiz, I was like, no, no way. All these people are crazy. <laughs> no, really, I thought they were crazy and fake and weird, and no. And then my mother, Don Pitts' wife. I went to secretarial school. I went to the law thing. He remembered, Don remembered me when I was a little kid. He, he did. was talking to my mom. He said, Wow. I don't really need a secretary. You know, what's your, what's your daughter doing? She says, Well, funny enough, she just came out of, you know, premier secretarial school where she oh, ran the whole so. place. <laughs> where she ran the I whole did. Place. I did. I was, you know, the class president and the whole deal. Of course, yeah. you of course were. I did. Excelled. We raised a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, anyway, I went out on an interview. Oh, God. I remember getting, you know, putting on the, and my mother, she wanted to do voiceover. Okay? Imagine that. It's In like, her showgirl costume? Hmm, that would yeah, be exactly. I want to do voiceover. Will you go with me on this interview? No. Is it show business? Yes. No. <laughs> please. He asked about you. No. I don't want to. Please. please. Ugh. So I went. And I remember... The office was right across the street from Chasen's, and I remember sitting there, and the window was open, and he was on the phone talking to Jerry Dick, like, yeah. <laughs> and then, what do you say to the guy? I mean, Don was full of jokes. Yeah, yeah. Don told jokes morning, noon, and night. Don was the joke teller. So he's sitting there on the phone with this guy telling jokes. I'm like, I don't want to be Really? <laughs> you know? And mom's like, yeah, I want to do voice over her. I want to do voice over her. I'm like, really? Looking out the window. And I just, we left. Thank you very much. And he called me every 15 minutes. Get out of here. No. Wow. He wanted me to be a secretary. And I was like, that guy's a creep, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't, it, it, no, no, no. He called me, and I'm not kidding, two weeks straight. And this is, I don't even think wow. I had a phone machine then. This is before, you know. Yeah. But he went, I finally, he's like, hey, Van. Hey, listen, when can you start? I'm like, oh. <laughs> no. So finally, he just beat me down. He beat you he down. He beat me you down. To, and I went in, in. And I went in. And he says, how much do you need? How much do you need to make? And I said, $200. I remember. A week. $200, $200 a week? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, nobody around here gets that. I'm like, that's what I need. He said, okay. <laughs> he oh said, my, okay. Yeah, I got $200. Oh, my and, Okay, God. and then I brought, my grandmother bought me my and blue the electrical typewriter. And skills began. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. I brought my own electric type, my my uh, which I just had refurbished, just sitting at my new office because yeah. it's so it. darling. Mm. It's the blue Selectric, <clears throat> and uh, I was the only one in the whole place that could type, because the place was filled with manual typewriters mm. because it looked so cool. Yeah, and then so I had to 
I was like the workhorse to get the, and he <laughs> gave me, he was like, can you make me a Rolodex? I was like the first real secretary I think wow. he ever had. And he gave me like pieces of Kleenex. <laughs> with numbers. Paper towels with numbers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I made him a Rolodex, so I wow. remember. Yeah. So did I really want to get into show business? No. However, everybody was so nice to me. Hans Conried and Casey Kasem. Yeah. George Fenneman and Jean Ferre and Linda Gary and just so many of these people, Gene Moss, they were so like thankful that I was there. So was that what changed your Frank heart? Frank Welker. Like, do yeah. you remember the moment when you sort of had that change of heart of like- I do. Oh, uh, what I do. I, I do because I was, I was needed and appreciated. Mm. And I hear, I listened because I guess they were used to not being heard yeah. kind of mm -hmm. thing. And, you know, if you listen clearly, you get the message quickly. If you yeah. listen half blank, mm -hmm. then it uh, takes longer to tell the story. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I, I did. I did that real switch real soon. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's so yeah. cool. I have never done recall ever even talking yeah. about this before. Well, yeah. and I think you... <clears throat> And I was there Lived three years into the before, uh, you know, the incident in <laughs> Bush Drive up in Malibu. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, after that, I went to the voice casters, me and little Tress for a year. And then I went mm -hmm. to a TGI. But for seven years, I think I had that. And then Michael Stahl, I don't know if you remember Michael. No, I don't. He was my big star. Him and Christopher Carey, we just... Near. Mike did all the jingles. Michael was a jingle. He was in the doors with Densmore or something, mm. okay? And he had this beautiful voice and he was doing jingles. And then they started hiring to do the voiceover. So, he, and it was all union. Yeah. So he'd get all the, the like, jingle Yamaha, money the way and the voiceover <laughs> money. <laughs> yes, That's it was cool. genius. That's Levi's, Yamaha. Yeah, it was yeah. a California cooler. Oh, man. The real stuff. Yeah, that's so cool. He did all those campaigns. Back when campaigns were campaigns. Completely. Yes. And the money was like sick. Yeah. Was like, Shower up. Yeah, was like, <laughs> yeah right. that was yeah. great. My first uh, uh, experience with with that, the jingle days yeah. and how the eye opening for me was uh, we did a, a jingle for TV Guide and I was doing the music. And the producer said, hey, Chuck. They want a real metal thing on this. Do you, do you want to sing it? Right. You know, just uh, the demo. And I said, sure. And it was called uh, it was called Scum was the name of the commercial. <laughs> it's on my YouTube channel if anybody wants to hear it. And it's, Chuck Duran and is it's scum. the craziest thing. And and they, the guys heard it at TV Guide and they go, great, we love it. And they used the demo okay. that I did all the music and sang this crazy vocal. And so here's what I remember. I remember going to my mailbox one day. <laughs> Because remember, musicians, royalties, music union, and then also union, right. right, for singing. Right. And I look in the mailbox and there's a check. And it's for $1,700. And I was like, wow. And then hold on. Two days later, mm. there's another check. Mm. This one's for like $3,000. And then there was another check for like $5,000. And then another check for $17,000. And I'm like, what the? Because it was full on national. They were playing the crap out of it. And I'm like. There and that's when I started doing jingles. Mm -hmm. What a good story! There's money in scum, people. Yeah, I'm like, I'll tell you. What right a now. good story. <laughs> yeah. See, you never know where your fate lies. Yes. You never know, man. So yes. you got to put sure it out that. there and say yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Exactly. Yes, please. Exactly. Yes, please. Let's yeah. have a go. Okay, at it. so so we can't have you here without talking about some of the memorable highlights oh, of your yeah. life <clears throat> okay. because Chuck will not sleep tonight. Of course. <laughs> uh, you have, what are some of your most memorable experiences? <clears throat> well. That you would like on the internet for You know, I've been very fortunate <laughs> <laughs> to have so many. Yes. I mean, really. Whenever I get like a little blue, I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Snap out of it. Yeah. Because, dude, I mean, we are, we're very like-minded and yeah. we're very lucky. You're people. like a yeah. cat. You have lived, not, you're living yeah. nine lives yeah. for sure. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of my most memorable uh, fun things was going to Stonehenge. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> ah, there's Big Ben. <laughs> Great. And we're done. Okay. We'll be uh, back. No. <laughs> Let's see. I'll cross my legs for this one. <laughs> Yeah, and listen, 
<laughs> Listen, we know you have some amazing <laughs> stories They're that, not all for that you don't. No, just tell classified. you a little bit. Yeah, tell us a little, a little bit. bit. Just some tell are us classified. A little bit. And I, we I don't remember. That. Oh yeah, it's, it would have been 1973 uh, when the Hyatt House used to uh, announce on their marquees all the bands that were staying there. Remember that? Yeah. Were you here then? Oh, yeah. You weren't even born then, right? No bull, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, my dearest friend Jill, British Jill, used to work at the Speakeasy in London. And, you know, London's a dinky place. You just know everybody. You know everybody. You know everybody. Everybody hangs out. You know everybody. Yeah. And this is in the early days. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to her. I said, oh, no, it says the billboard Led Zeppelin's on the, is, uh, in town. And she said. Who's in town? Led, Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Oh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. And she said, uh, oh, my God, I know. And I said, okay. And she said, call. And she was out of town. She said, call uh, the road manager, call Richard, and uh, tell him that I'm in town. And uh, we'll get together when I get back. And I said, fair enough. That's simple. So I called. <clears throat> and you could hear all the ruckus going on in the background. And uh, the short story is when Jill got back into town, uh, we went over to the Hyatt and they had the whole, I think it was the ninth floor. Yeah. And uh, it was the end of the first tour. They would tour for a month, go home and recoup for a month, and then they'd come back and tour for a month. Yeah. And uh, we caught them on the very end of the last tour. I think there were five or six shows at the Forum yeah. or something. Anyway, they knew that we were safe and didn't want anything. And, yeah. and they were immediately, well, we went into, Rich, into Richard's room. And one by one, the guys was like, who's Richard got in there? And there was a lot of activity going on, yes. to say the least. Yeah. A lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the Hyatt was just And like, I remember Bonzo telling central. me. Yeah. Well, they used to have the restaurant was open 24 hours a day. Yeah. I remember sitting there with David Jolliffe. Hey, Jolliffe. <laughs> and Billy Mummy. <laughs> When we were little kids drinking coffee, you know, it was the first time I was drink too much coffee. Have you ever done that? Like, yeah, <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we'd, we'd hang. We did some major hanging. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they were so, Bonzo was just so tired. They were all so tired and weary from being so active that month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that we had these great conversations about farming and bricklaying and just real down to earth, normal people stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they ended up like, get the girls their own room, you know? So next thing you know, we had our own, your own thing, suite on yeah. the seventh floor yeah. or yeah. ninth floor. floor. Yeah. Whatever it was, <laughs> get, the girls their get own them floor. a floor. Give, yeah. Yeah, give them a floor. Give them a floor. So we just, from then on, I mean, we went to every forum show. We took them to the airport when they split. And uh, Jill and I were living at the Chateau Marmont in room 2B, right next door to Christopher Jones, which is a whole nother story. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we were, uh, it was about 5 a.m., about three days after they left. And uh, the phone rang, and it was the Peter Grant, their manager, and the road manager, Richard Cole, and saying, uh, the guys have asked us if you'd like to join us on the next round of the tour. And I was like, hold huh. on, <laughs> Jill, you talk. Wait a minute. Am I free? Go on tour with <laughs> Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Uh, Jill, <laughs> hold on. Can we do that? Jill, you're not going to believe this. You know, so she said, yeah, we'd love to. Thank you. Bye-bye. And so it was going to start up in a month. And it was slowly creeping towards that month's end. And uh, we're like... Uh, it was nice of them to ask. It's not going to happen. You know, like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know. You thought it was just, yeah. And the phone well, rang yeah. two days before. Like, your tickets are at the, there'll be a limo to take you and a tickets are at the thing. And we're going to send you to New York first. Um, the tour didn't start. In, in, it started in Chicago. No, Detroit. Yeah. Started in Detroit. But they were sending us to New York because they knew we'd never been to New York before. Mm. And yeah. they wanted us to see New York. So their uh, cool IRA 11, I think, their, their, their accountants picked us up at the airport in New York, <laughs> seriously, and took us there. We stayed at their place, and then they took us there, and then we went to Detroit. And, uh, and then it was just like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? It was, we play Monopoly, mm. you know, we go to every show. <laughs> um, we had our own plane. 
said Led Zeppelin on the side. It was great. <laughs> Man. Bill, uh, Bobby Were Sherman's- you guys on the plane as well? Oh. Yeah. Dude, city to city. And, yeah. Oh, man. How Never cool. a bus. Because you basically, when you I heard that bands man. traveled in buses, yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, honey, oh, I'm, you sorry. Guys have a bus? <laughs> I'm so we sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, we had a jet and we went all over the place. Wow. And it was great. That's awesome. And uh, I'm in that Time magazine. Uh, there's that history of rock and roll. Are you really? I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody told me and then sent me the thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm in it for a second. That is so <laughs> cool. I'm just so happy cool. that you could give us like a glimpse into that era. But see, here's the, the bottom line is everybody was normal. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is another thing where I got to hang out with the heaviest of the heaviest of yeah. the heaviest. And everybody was kind hearted. Yeah. And caring and down to earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you didn't feel like you had to that you were put a face on yeah Yeah. Yeah. so i would i I was allowed to just be who i am and yeah Mm -hmm. and that is a precious yeah thing well that is the end of part one with the awesome vanessa gilbert we'll be back next week with part two we will we are having so much fun you guys you don't want to miss it we love you thank you so much for watching follow all of us on social and just remember you you always have have time for a little buzz Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demos That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.